وحجتك على من فوق الأرض ومن تحت الثرى الصديق الشهيد صلاة كثيرة متواصلة متواترة مترادفة كأفضل ما صليت على Ali ibn al-Rida alayhi salam was one of the children of Imam Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam and he was born in Medina. Imam al-Rida alayhi salam lived with his father for a few years until his father was captured by Harun al-Abbasi and was imprisoned after which Imam al-Rida alayhi salam assumed the responsibility of taking care of the family of Bani Hashim or the Fatimiyat or the children of Imam Ali alayhi salam after his father or during the time of his father being in the prison. So this was the time and then when his father was martyred in the prison of Harun al-Rashid, Imam al assumed the responsibilities of Imamah. There was initially an objection to his Imamah by a group of individuals known as al waqifiyah that were led by a man called Ali ibn Abi Hamza al-Bata'ini and Ziyad ibn Marwan al-Qandi and Uthman al-Rawasi. All three who were actually genuine companions of Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam but turned against him because of some money, financial wealth that they had with them. But they were proven wrong by the Imam salam alayhi alayhi. And unlike the Khilafah of Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam, Imam al-Ghaba actually went explicit with his Khilafah, with his basically, not Khilafah in the sense um, al-Khilafah al-Zahiriya as uh, the leadership, but rather as him being the Imam. السلام على من اتبع الهدى. وعليكم السلام يا ابن رسول الله. He's got other titles, al-Radi, al-Sabir, ولكن but al-Rضا is the most well-known title. The title al-Rضا is extraordinary or very special because since the time of after Ashura, after the time of Imam Hussein, the revolutionary people they were. always asking for the appearance of al-Rida, يَدْعُونَ لِلْرِضَى مِنْ آلِ محمد. And even the Imams used to be known as uh, al-Rida, as there was kind of 
Like now we are waiting for the awaited Imam Salamullah Ali Al Mahdi Ajala Farajah. Before Imam Rada, everyone was waiting for a Rada Min Al Muhammad. Rada means the accepted one. There are so many interpretations why he is called al rida but uh, some people said that Al-Mu'moon used to call him that, and we have, we deny that, and we have the best one who answered that issue or that rumor is Al-Allama uh, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan al Yasin in his book about the biography of the 12 Imams. But he was well known of his title and uh, some people say that he was well known of that title because he was accepted by the Am and al khas uh, i.e. The, uh, the Sunni and the Shia, all of the Muslims, and so on and so forth. There are so many theories, but uh, the fact that he is called al rida and people before al rida was waited for him and people after him... Uh, start you know the imam start preparing for a new phase so the life of imam rada the imam of imam rada was kind of a, a, a divider or, or or kind of ending a, a, a stage and beginning of a new stage in the history of ahlul bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim there is a ziyara called uh, ziyaratul jawadain in which we uh, send our peace and salutations to uh, Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam as well as uh, his son Imam Muhammad ibn Ali and al-Jawad. And in that ziyara, there is a reference uh, being made to the eighth Imam as such. As-salamu ala al-Imam al-Ra'uf, which means peace be upon the compassionate loving Imam. There's been a lot of discussion uh, centered around the compassion of Imam al-Ridha. And uh, in particular, why Imam al-Ridha has been singled out from all of the other Imams as the one who is compassionate, as the one who is loving, as the one who is merciful, right? And the word Ra'uf is, an, is a step up from Rahim. Rahim is to be merciful, right? But Ra'uf is something even greater than merciful. It is the kind of mercy that the recipient of that mercy is able to easily detect and is able to taste. As a child is able to taste the mercy of his mother, not so much his father perhaps, because the father works in the background, the father is working as the breadwinner and he's providing for the family. But when it comes to the mother, there's a, a relationship that's on a completely different level. And that's Ra'fa. That's not rahmah, that's mercy that is beyond the type of typical mercy that you get from a father towards his son even. So Imam al-Rida is labeled as al-Imam al-Ra'uf. The Imam lived at the time of three Abbasi Khalifs, uh, Al-Rashid or Al-Rashid, and uh, Al-Amin, his son, his eldest son, and Al-Ma'amun. Uh, and most of his uh, life was at the time of Al-Ma'amun. Uh, I mean, most of his Imamat, because everyone remember that or knows that the Imam was asked by Al-Ma'amun to become the crown prince and asked for him to go and live in Tus. And uh, mentioning the time, uh, it was a critical time as the Muslimin or the Muslims start being more intellectual. The translation became so active, translation of other books from other languages, from Greek to Arabic, from Persian, from so many languages. This kind of translation was so active and took place at that time, before that time and during the time of Al-Ma'mun Al-Abbasi.
During the time of Imam Maghrabi the ruling dynasty was the Abbasid dynasty. The Abbasid dynasty are the progeny of Al Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi. In fact, they come from Abdullah ibn Al Abbas. So Abdullah ibn Al Abbas, if we make it simple, he had a grandson. This grandson had a grandson. So the grandson of the grandson of Abdullah ibn Al Abbas is the founder of the Abbasi dynasty. And when the Abbasis came to power, now initially they rose to power claiming that we will give the leadership to Bani Hashim. And they actually pledged their allegiance to the great grandchild of Al Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam. And they pledged their allegiance to him three times in Medina once, in Mecca once, and in a city close to Mecca called Al Abwa. Al Abwa, that's where three times they pledged their allegiance to this grandchild of Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam. But then they once they took the Khilafah, they turned against them and they started persecuting Bani Hashim brutally, which led to the dispersion of Bani Hashim throughout the Muslim world. Among the caliphs of Bani Umayyah and Bani al-Abbas, one can safely say al-Ma'mun al-Abbasi was the smartest and he was the most unique amongst them. In the sense he really thought about each and every move he made, plus he came out to the public being very intelligent. He promoted literature, he promoted science, education, which was quite different from, let's say, his brother Al-Amin, who was known to be a womanizer, a person who enjoyed parties, and many of the caliphs, in fact, that came, Al-Mutawakkil, Al-Abbasi, for example, had that kind of reputation. However, Al-Ma'mun was different. He did not have such a reputation in front of the people. So, he came to power. Now, it's interesting to say that Al Ma'mun is about six months older than his brother Muhammad Al Amin. But his mother was a maid. Whereas Muhammad Al Amin, his brother, his mother was Zubayda from Bani Hashim. So, Muhammad Al Amin, in fact, is the only Abbasi caliph whose both parents come from Bani Hashim. Both are Abbasi from both ends. That's why he had really a prestige. And his mother, Zubayda, pushed and forced her husband, Harun, to have Muhammad al-Amin become his successor. وَلْنَنْتَظِرْ جَمِيعًا حُكْمَ مَنْ يَمْلِكُ الْحُجَّةَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَى خِدْمَتِي وَإِخْلَاصِ لَهِ أَوْ خِيَانَةِ لِوَلَائِهِ هَلْ تَرَى فِي غَيْرِهِ الْأَهْلِيَّةَ لِيَكُونَ حَكَمًا؟ ماذا تقصد يا فضل؟ كن أكثر وضوحاً قصدي واضح تماماً فلا تحاول إثارة النزاعات وكما ذكر مولانا الأمير في فرمانه سنتوجه إلى بغداد وكل ما يجب قوله سنطرحه في حضوره لنقف على رأيه فيما يتعلق بوصايا أبيه أليس هذا أفضل؟ لا سنرحل لكن ليس إلى بغداد بل إلى مرو حيث عبد الله المأمون لنكون بذلك قد نفذنا وصية الخليفة المخفور له وأثبتنا طاعتنا وولاءنا لولي عهده وأثبتنا ولاءنا لأسرة بن العباس هذا ما سنعلنه During the reign of uh, uh, Harun al-Rashid, the father of Ma'mun, Imam al rida lived under his reign for 10 years and those were probably the most difficult 10 years that the Imam had to live through. Uh, a time of absolute tyranny, of utter terror, a time when Imam al rida uh, and uh, other members of the Bani Hashim were frequently attacked, frequently ambushed. And in one of those incidents, a man named Jaludi was appointed by Harun al-Rashid to ambush and ransack the house of Imam al rida May God's peace and blessings be upon him in the pitch black darkness of night. 
Now you can imagine, just put yourself in that situation. You are not only a wanted man, but you are attacked in your own home. Women and children screaming. Um, you have uh, uh, armed guards uh, ambushing your house and ransacking everything that you have. Your belongings are taken away. It's a horrifying experience that I believe most people aren't able to even comprehend, let alone fully understand. And so Al Jaludi is dispatched by Harun al Rashid to do exactly that. Remember, the intention wasn't to steal, uh, wasn't only to steal what Imam al Rida and his family had. It wasn't only to leave them uh, 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 homeless, if you like. It was to terrify them. It was to send a message. So Jaludi comes and he starts by ambushing the houses of Bani Hashim, <coughs> but he starts off with Imam al Rida's house himself. He goes in, he knocks the door, the Imam emerges from inside the house. The Imam says to him, what do you want? He said, I have my orders, I'm here to come in and do whatever I need to do. Imam Rada knew exactly what he intended to do. He told him, I have a request to make. And my request to you is if you're here to take what we have, then allow me to go inside my house get all the gold, get all the jewelry, get everything that the women and the children have, get everything that I possess in this life, and I'll bring it over to you and hand it to you without you having to come in and terrify my women and my children. Jaludi was a vicious man. He was a tyrant. He was employed by the tyrant of the day. But for some reason, he felt the genuineness of Imam al -Rida. And these are, remember, these are infallible representatives of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't help but feel a sense of uh, mercy towards them. So when the Imam pleaded with him not to terrify the women and the children, he said, you know what, that's fine. Just go inside and bring me everything. The Imam went inside and sure enough, he got all the jewelry, all the gold, all the clothing that they had and he brought it over and handed it to Jaludi. He took it and he uh, went back to where he came from. Now, again, Imam al Rida lived under the reign of Harun al Rashid for 10 years, and it was uh, terror after terror, it was fear after fear. But then the tides shifted. And after Ma'moon, uh, after Harun came Amin, and after Amin came Ma'moon, and Ma'moon decided to do things differently for whatever reason. And because of that, because he had fought his brother, he now went after the uh, men on, on whose shoulders the government of his brother Amin rested. So he went after the most important advisors and aides and generals in the army of Amin, and he started an onslaught against all of them. He started executing every single one in revenge. And one of the people that he apprehended was Jaludi himself. Now remember, this is years and years after that incident with Imam al in Medina. So again, because the tables had turned, Imam al was now the uh, uh, the crown prince of Ma'moon and, and all the top generals at the time of Harun and Amin were now either fugitives or they were captives. As Imam al-Rida is sitting on top of his throne next to Ma'moon, suddenly they bring in these captives, one of whom was Jaludi. As soon as Imam al-Rida sees this man, as vicious as he was, as tyrannical and despotic as he was, but in order to thank him and to show appreciation for the fact that he decided not to ambush the house of Imam al the Imam whispered into the ears of Ma'moon. He said to him, Habni hadha al-ghulam. Spare him, give him to me. Let him be my servant, don't kill him. When Jaludi saw Imam al speaking into the ear of Ma'moon, he assumed, having done all the things that he had done, he assumed that the Imam was asking Ma'moon to, to, to uh, deal a very painful punishment at him and at Jaludi, that is. So he immediately looked at Ma'moon and he said to him, do not listen to what he has to say to you. Do not do what he's asking you to do. So Ma'moon looked at him and he said, I will not do what he just asked me to do. He just asked me to release you. He asked me to pardon you but I will do the exact opposite as per your wishes. And he had him beheaded. Look at Imam al-Rida an enemy who came to ambush his house, who took all of his possessions. And yet the Imam is so merciful that he says, please spare him, pardon him, don't kill him.
In fact, one time Harun was having a conversation with his wife Zubaydah, and he was telling her, I feel that Al Abdullah al Ma'moon is far more qualified than Muhammad al Amin, and I will prove it to you. She said, Okay, sure. At night, late at night, he says, Watch. Harun calls one of the guards and he says, Call Muhammad al Amin to me right now. So the guard goes and knocks on the door of Muhammad al Amin and he wakes up in the middle of the night he says what's the matter he said your father is calling you so he comes and approaches his dad in his pajamas his hair is all messed up and his eyes are half closed he says what's the matter here why did you wake me up at this time he said son i will grant you three wishes any three wishes i will give you at this time what would you like the, you know the, the boy said all right well you have a very nice garden I like really that garden. I want you to give it to me. He said, it's yours. What else? He said, well, my second wish is you have a very nice horse, which is really fast. I like to have that horse. It's yours. What else? He said, you have a very beautiful maid. I want that maid. He said, she's yours. All right, done. He goes back. He tells Zubaydah, who was with him in the room, now watch. He tells the guard, go call al Ma'moon. He calls al Ma'moon. Ma'moon gets up this late at night, why would my father call me? He actually freshens up, he puts on his military clothes, and he comes. Because he thought that there must be a war or something that's going on, otherwise my father would not wake me up at this time of the night. Now the minute he walks in, and Harun looks at him, and he looks at Zubaydah and says, kind of trying to tell her, look at the difference. Then he tells him, I give you three wishes, what would you like? Ma'mun looks at his father and he says, the first wish I would like is that I want you to forgive all your political prisoners. But you tell them that it was Al-Ma'mun Al-Abbas who forgave you all. He says, done. What else do you want? He says, my second wish is I want you to raise the salaries of all your army men. Anyone in the army, you raise their salaries. And you tell them that the salaries were raised by Al-Ma'mun Al-Abbasi says done what's your third wish he said my third wish is that this year I want you to write to all your governors throughout the Islamic State telling them that I will not collect any taxes from you you keep the taxes for yourself but this is through the order of Al Ma'mun Al Abbasi and he tells him done and he goes go then Harun turns to Zubaydah and he says did you see the difference did you see at the wishes? He said, Ma'mun has now basically secured all the army men because he's raised their salaries, they're gonna love him. He is now secured the love of the people because he's freed the political prisoners. And he's secured the love of the governors and the respect of the governors. Their loyalty is gonna switch now to him because he made them keep their taxes. <laughs> عزيز يموت ثم يغرق وارثه في نزاع على طريقته So Ma'mun, you could see, was a very unique man, and his father knew so. But he was under pressure from his wife to appoint Muhammad al-Amin. So he took both al-Ma'mun and al-Amin with him to Hajj one year, and he did something that was never done by any other Khalifa. He told them both that I will divide the state between you two. After I die, Muhammad al-Amin will become the Khalifa. When he dies, Abdullah al-Ma'mun becomes the Khalifa. However, Muhammad al-Amin will govern Baghdad and those surrounding countries and Africa, etc. Al-Amin or Al-Ma'mun will take care of Khurasan and those parts of the state. And they both signed the agreement and he posted it in the Kaaba.
situation wasn't that easy, especially the Abbasids when they were running the revolution against the Umayyad, uh, they used to uh, ask for al rida min al-Muhammad. Yani since the time of al-Mansur al-Dawaniqi, Abu Muslim al-Khurasani in Mashhad, that was years before the Imam went to, to Tus, uh, they were asking for al-Rida. Kanu yad'una ila al-Rida min al-Muhammad. That makes his role very special and very difficult. And that's why Al-Mamun asked for him, because Al-Rida is in Al-Madina. His father, Musa ibn Ja'far, was killed, poisoned by Harun Rashid. Al-Mamun faced a huge problem when he killed his brother, Al-Amin. He wanted to uh, secure his position. Even Bani Al-Abbas, they were revolting against him in Baghdad. So by having the Imam next to him, he guaranteed that the Shia will not oppose him, at least on temporary basis, because specifically at that time, communication wasn't as good as it is now. Second, he will probably try to make best use or benefit from the presence of the Imam. إن سياسة حكومة بني العباس تعتمد البطش ليس مهما فنحن لا نخاف وهم مشهورون بسفك الدماء إن أرواحنا فداء لك نفديك بأرواحنا كل واحد منكم ثمة من ينتظره في داره أرواح هؤلاء عزيزة وسيوف هذه الحكومة فتاكة إنها طريق يجب بذل كل المهج في سبيلها فجوهر إيمان عباد الله سبحانه وتعالى تصقل على الدوام مشقات الأيام والسنين وهذه مشيئة الله فالحياة ممر اختبار إلهي ومحك بيان مدى ثباتكم وإخلاصكم ما تواجهونه سهل من البلاءات وبعده العزة لله ماذا تقولون؟ هل أنصارنا مستعدون لخوض هذا الاختبار الإلهي؟ أنت لست بالشخص الذي يسمح بأن تهدر حقوقه على الإطلاق وأن يؤول ما هو لك إلى غيرك هكذا بكل بساطة هل الوقت مناسب لهذا الحديث؟ أجل إنه الوقت المناسب تماما ألم تكن تفكر جديا خارج الخيمة بما عليك فعله مع أخيك وكيف ستتحمل تنفيذ أوامره إليك؟ لا ألم تكن تفكر ببني العباس وأنهم سوف لن يترددوا لحظة في دعم وحماية الأمين وأنهم يرجحونه عليك ألم تفكر في ذلك؟ لا ألم تكن السيدة زبيدة أم الأمين مع كل ما تتمتع به من مقام ووقار شاخصة أمام ناظريك؟ تعني لوحدي الآن يا فاضل ألم تكن تفكر أبدا بأمك مراجل تلك الجارية وتقارن بينها وبين زبيدة أم الأمين يا ابن الأمير؟ آه قسما بالله إنني سأنهي حياتك يا فاضل ما لا تستطيع أنا واثق أنك تستطيع فرغباتك قد سخرت كل وجودك ولا أحد يستطيع أن يردعك عن سعيك إلى تحقيقها على الإطلاق محمد الأمين had a minister by the name of الفضل ابن الربيع who started whispering to him telling him you should keep your brother المأمون aside push him aside and appoint your son as your caliph, your successor. When he did this, that basically initiated the war between him and Al-Ma'moon, Ab Muhammad, Abdullah Al-Ma'moon. So Muhammad Al-Amin raised an army to go fight against Al-Ma'moon. Ma'moon had a very smart minister himself by the name of Al-Fadl ibn Sahl, who was also the man who raised Al-Ma'moon Al-Abbasi. He was the man who helped him raise him. They initially came up with tactics that basically allowed Al-Ma'moon to overall, at the end, win the battle, win the war. And he killed his own brother, Al-Amin, and he severed his head, 
put it on the palace door and he said anyone who wants to enter through the gate to speak to the Khalifa he has to spit in the face of my brother Muhammad Al-Amin for three years he did so <laughs> As the Imam was coming from Medina towards Tus, towards present-day Mashhad in Khurasan, the Imam passes through the city of Naysabur, or Naysabur as they call it. Now, this was a turning point in the history of Shia Islam. This was one of those triumphant, legendary events that resemble the likes of the uh, conquering of the holy city of, uh, of Mecca by the Prophet and the Muslim army. It represents a very important, pivotal point in our history. Because it was in that city that thousands upon thousands of people came out to greet Imam al-Rida the grandson of the Holy Prophet of Islam. It was probably one of those moments where the Ahlul Bayt were shown a little bit of appreciation by the general masses and the government was not there to prevent that. And so they say up to 100,000 people emerged uh, in order to greet the Imam. But there was this elderly man who was uh, unable to walk. Being disabled, um, he noticed that everyone was going out uh, of the city to welcome the Imam at the main gate. He told his sons, he said, what's happened? They told him, Imam, Imam al-Ridha is coming. He said, I wish I could go, but unfortunately I can't. So his heart was broken not having been able to go out and to meet Imam al-Ridha as everyone else did. So he stays back at home, his children leave him. Suddenly, while he's sitting inside his home, all alone, heartbroken, there's a knock on the door. He struggles to go to the door and he opens it and it's Imam al-Ridha himself. The Imam said, I heard that you wanted to come and see me, so I came to see you. The man was a barber. Uh, his profession was a barber. So the, the Imam comes in, he sits down. He says to the Imam, I have one request. I have nothing to offer you except my services as a barber. Would you let me shave your hair? The Imam said, sure. So he gets up and he shaves the Imam's hair. When he finishes, the Imam then taps the blade that he used to shave his hair, he touches it and by the grace of his touch, by his heavenly and divine touch, the blade turns into solid gold. So the elderly man says to the Imam, he says to him, O son of the Messenger of Allah, I don't want this reward from you. That's not why I did what I did. The Imam says to him, then what do you want from me? He said, I want you to be there at the moment of my death. When I'm on my deathbed, I want you to be there beside me. See, the Imam said to him, I shall do so. And history tells us that what the, when the man was about to die, Imam al rida then came all the way from Tus and he witnessed this person's passing and he was there next to him as he laid on his deathbed. نحمد الله أنه مهد طريق الإسلام وسهل على المتعطشين للإسلام سبل بلوغ ينابيعه وثبت ومتن أركانه 
كي لا يستطيع أحد مقارعته والتغلب عليه أيها الإخوة اعلموا أن سبيل ديننا هو سبيل واحد وهو سوي وقصير Imam Agrabah said, I will accept with conditions. He said, I will accept any conditions you have. So he said, let's write them down. So they wrote them down. The beginning of the letter, the conditions, Imam Agrabah says, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ya'lamu kha'inat al-a'yun wa ma tukhfi sudur Praise be to Allah who knows the traders and what they prepare and hide in their chests. What is he really talking about? Imam al Raba really knows what Al Ma'mun is thinking. And when he writes this, this is something called Bara'atul Istihlal. You know how we start the letter sometimes. It relates with the context of the situation. So Imam from the beginning is saying, this man is trying to betray us, is trying to cheat us, and he will indeed do so. اسمعوني واعلموا ان ابواب الحكمه الالهيه مفتحه لدى اهل البيت ونور الدين قد سطع بفضل توجيهات ابائنا استعينوا بالله ولا تغفلوا عن ذكر اسمه جل جلاله and so this is how the Imam Ali Salam became the, the successor. And among the conditions was that he will never interfere in any political decision in the governance system. So he will not have to do anything with the, with the politics. And Ma'mun accepted all the conditions of the Imam and the Imam became the successor. Al Ma'mun celebrated and this was on the sixth day of Ramadan. So the Shia were very happy and in fact until today the Shia celebrate the sixth day of Ramadan because it was the day when Shia for the first time after so many years had the opportunity to come and shake the hand of the Imam in Bay'ah in public in front of everyone else without having to fear persecution. And then Al Ma'mun made some coins with the name of Al Imam Al Rida alayhi salam written on them. Just like we see today for example some kings or queens writing their names so he did so, and these became known as ad darahim al radawiyyah the Radawi uh, monetary coins. And he distributed them, people celebrated, poets came, and that really helped the situation of Al Ma'mun to stabilize his Khilafah. <laughs> Imam Salawatullah alayh, led a few debates uh, and mentioning that even his son Imam Muhammad al Jawad has the same thing because that was the time of debating. Uh, now, uh, some historians they are mentioning those debates as scientific debates or theological debates, but there is something worth mentioning. I think Al Ma'mun and even some of uh, the historians they were. Um, they were mentioning that that by getting the Imam involved in these debates, trying to embarrass him, thinking that he might not be able to answer uh, or the debates correctly or to cover the subjects, and probably that will be a big uh, embarrassment for the Imam. And uh, then in Qalab al Sahar al Sahar, he noticed that in each debate they had the Imam, the Imam win the debate and uh, even some of them became followers of the Imam, whether they are Christian or Buddhist or Jewish or whatever. <laughs> إنني على علم بمقامك ومنزلتك في المدينة لكن قد سبق وأصدرت أمرا ولا أنوي التراجع عنه أبدا ترى هل تريد تجاهل ما صدر عني من أوامر؟ كلا سأفعل ما قلته بنفسك إنهم من أقربائي 
أيكم مستعد لاستضافة أقربائي؟ أنا مستعدة وأنا 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 مستعدة وأنا 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 مستعد وأنا وأنا مستعد وأنا أيضا وأنا وأنا أيضا وأنا وأنا اصمتوا 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 كنت سمعت عنك أنك لا تنطق إلا بالصدق لكنني أراك الآن تكذب إنني لم أكذب ولكنك قلت للتو إنهم أقرباء لك ألم تقل سمعك الجميع هنا صحيح عليك إذن أن تقوم بإخباري بصلة القرابة بينكم إنهم إخوة لي تقول إنهم إخوة لك؟ المجرمون المشردون ليس بهم شبه لإخوتك أبدا أنت مخطئ اذهبوا أيها الإخوة أخلوا سبيلهم لا لا أسمح بذلك لا تخلوا سبيلهم هات برهانك أثبت أنهم إخوتك أتريد برهانا؟ أجل هات برهانك واقنعني قال الله تبارك وتعالى إنما المؤمنون إخوة أتريد برهانا أوثق من كلام الله؟ Interestingly, a man came to Imam al-Rida alayhi salam accusing him for accepting to work with al-Ma'mun al-Abbasi, accusing him of corruption wal-Iyadu billah. Imam al-Rida very kindly, very compassionately, knowing his very kind character, looked at him and he said, who is better, a Muslim or someone who is not Muslim? He said, well, obviously a Muslim. He said, okay, well, here you had Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam who was a prophet of Allah he worked with somebody who was not a Muslim in fact he was a kafir at the time when the king of his time the pharaoh of his time told him prophet Yusuf that I want you to become basically my minister prophet Yusuf alayhi salam said let me be in charge of the monetary situation and of the situation of saving the food and disturbing the food distributing the food that will be the best and he did so so he says here is Yusuf working for a non-Muslim tyrannic leader of his time the king of his time and here I am at least I'm working with someone who claims to be a Muslim a Muslim but when Yusuf السلام, did so he had no choice he was forced to do so to accept that plus he saw himself Yusuf السلام, saw himself fit so that he can practice the justice he can use and lead with justice. And here I am similarly forced to work with Al-Ma'mun Al-Abbasi, not out of my choice, but this is now something that's been imposed upon me. And God knows it was not with my decision, but he threatened to kill me. So I had to save myself in this particular case and accept this position. السلام على من اتبع وعليكم السلام يا ابن رسول الله It's well known that the Imam used to run the majalis. Uh, before him, Imam al-Sadiq even, we had so many stories about him staying in and having a majlis in his house. In fact, all of the Imams. But uh, Imam al-Ridha became famous because we had the story of Di'bil al-Khuza'i, the, the poet who came and he recited the abiyat about Imam Hussein and Imam al-Ridha uh, cried with his, uh, uh, with his uh, uh, family and then he mentioned himself being killed in Tus. That's what make it make the uh, the story or the issue uh, very very famous. Man minkum huwa da'bil al-Khuzai. Alladhi yaqulu shi'ruhu bakaytu li rasm ad-dar min 'arafati. 
وأجريت دمع العين في الوجنات أين منشد هذا البيت من الشعر؟ أين منشد هذا البيت من الشعر؟ فأنا لم أرى يبدو أن شاعرك لا يعتبرني متحدثا لذا التزم الصمت أطلب منه أن لا يحرمني سماع الجميل من أقواله أنشد يا دعبل أنشد بعض الأبيات السلام على الإمام الرؤوف الذي هيج أحزان يوم الطفوف The merciful imam who did what? Who was most noted for what? He was noted for being the one who galvanized the emotions of the masses for the massacre that took place on the day of Ashura. الذي هيج means to galvanize, to evoke, to provoke. أحزان, the sadness, يوم الطفوف, the tragedy of طفوف, the tragedy of Imam al Hussein. نجوم سماوات بأرض فلات. And this is a very telling statement because what it means is there is a, a special relationship between Imam al Rida alayhi salam and Imam al Hussein. وقبر ببغداد وقبر ببغداد لنفس زكية تضمنها الرحمن في الغرفات. وقبر ببغداد وقبر ببغداد لنفس زكية تضمنها الرحمن في الغرفات. It was in fact Imam al Rida himself who established the tradition of the rituals of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, the crying, the lamentation, the eulogizing, the gatherings uh, that were encouraged by Imam al Rida. Uh, for people to get together and eulogize and to uh, commemorate the tragedy of Imam al-Hussein. There's a very famous narration um, in which the Imam addresses Ar-Rayyan ibn Shabib. Ar-Rayyan ibn Shabib, interestingly enough, was the uncle, the maternal uncle of uh, either Ma'moon or Al-Mu'tasim. So one of these two tyrants, we know that Ar-Rayyan ibn Shabib was in fact related to. However, at being related to them uh, and, and being among the courtiers of these tyrants obviously isn't a matter of predestination. Uh, and this is probably one of those examples that we can cite to say, no matter what your background, no matter what your history, no matter what you've done in the past, it has absolutely no relevance to who you can be. You can still be a man of virtue and a man of honor uh, or a woman of virtue and honor even though you come from a long line of tyrants and sinners and so forth. Ar-Rayyan ibn Shabib is their uncle and yet he is one of the closest confidants to Imam al-Rada alayhi salam. And the Imam says to him in a famous hadith, he says to him, Ya ibn Shabib, إن كنت باكيا على إن كنت باكيا لشيء فبكي الحسين. O oh, Ibn Shabib, if you're going to cry for anything, then cry for Imam Hussein. Ibn Ali عليه السلام. فإنه ذبح كما يذبح الكبش. For he was slaughtered the way a sheep is slaughtered. Al-Ma'moon, he, at the beginning of his ruling, his uh, situation was a bit gazely, wasn't that stable. And that's when he tried to make sure or to ensure that most of those uh, revolutionary people or, or his opponents are staying silent. Having the Imam next to him probably guarantee longer life to him and to his uh, leadership.
When Al Ma'mun Al Abbasi appointed Imam Al Rida as his Khalifa or his successor, basically his Khalifa, and this was in the year 201 after Hijrah. When he appointed him, then three years later, the situation escalated in the sense the popularity of Imam Al Rida started to really increase. And now remember, he is now the second man in the state after the Khalifa. So people started really loving Imam al Rida. His knowledge started to spread. And Al Ma'mun realized that he's made a big mistake. In fact, he himself said that we have made a very big mistake. But now it's too late. We have to find an alternative solution. So he tried to make people disrespect Imam al Rida by bringing many intellectuals to discuss and argue with Imam al Rida alayhi salam. People like Imran al Sabi'i. Imran al Sabi'i, who was a Zerudasian, was very well known in debating and arguing. This man had an argument with Imam al Rida that lasted for hours until finally. He prostrated on the ground, did sujood, and said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, wa anna ka anta wa siyu Rasulullah. That I bear witness of the la ilaha, there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, and you are a true successor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. This situation was witnessed by all people in the court of Al Ma'mun. Christians were there, the Imam debated with the Christians. The Jews were there, he debated with them. And he told Imam, who started debating them from at Torah, from Al Injil, using their own language, which really stunned them, stunned everyone. And this really proved the greatness of Imam al Rabah after this particular event, among many other events. But this one, Al Ma'mun decided that he will poison Imam al Rabah. ما رأيك بالجلوس؟ لم آتي لأجلس ابن عمي العزيز ماذا تريد مني يا ابن العم؟ تخاطبني بلهجة المعاتب ناديتك باسم أبيك هل يعذبك سماع اسم أبيك؟ كلا لكن اسمي عبد الله وكنية المأمون ومقام خليفة المسلمين لا تتباهى بخلافتك فمثل هذه الخلافة لا تستحق أكثر من أن تكون لعبة بيد أولاد الأزقة والأحياء So unfortunately what happened is he himself المأمون العباسي took some grapes or some pomegranates and he himself put, took a poison thread and started threading the poison into the grapes and into the pomegranates. And he himself fed them to Al-Imam al And this is also unique. It tells you what kind of a person this man was. Usually we have khulafas who order the execution or the killing or the poisoning of our Imams salam, but they don't do it personally themselves. They order it and others, some of their workers, some of their governors, they carry out the crime. In this particular case, Al Ma'mun himself, he poisoned the food. He gave it to Al Imam Salamullah. So he killed the Imam Salamullah. Imam al Rada alayhi salam, interestingly himself, started encouraging people to come for his ziyarah. And that is also unique amongst the Imams. Usually, it is not the case where the Imams encourage, come and visit me. Imam al Rida, because he was buried the farthest, he is in fact the farthest Imam being buried away from the city of Medina. So he himself 
started telling people, come over to visit me. And he himself, in fact, narrated a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi, where he said, a part of me will be buried in Khurasan. Anyone who goes to visit him while he or she recognizes his greatness, his Adama, I will intercede on their behalf, the Prophet, on the day of judgment. Or another hadith, he will have Jannah. Paradise will be granted to him.